everyone. I'm Dr. Samal Noria, Associate Professor of Pathology in the Cayman Islands. From my teaching experience, I have noticed that a lot of students face difficulties with basics of topics like leukemias, lymphomas, some anemias. And the reason behind this is mostly poor understanding of formation of various blood cells. So I wanted to make this video for an enhanced understanding of development of blood cells in the bone marrow, peripheral blood and the tissues which will eventually help you understand hematology concepts in a better way. So let's take a look at how these cells are formed in this video. Now here you see beginning from the stem cell which is also known as the multipotential hematopoietic stem cell or hematocytoblast. The two cell series that arise from this cell are called as the myeloid and the lymphoid series. Now each of these series has its own progenitor cell called as the common myeloid progenitor and the common lymphoid progenitor. Now further the cells formed from the common myeloid progenitor include platelets, RBCs, mast cells, the myeloblast. Now myeloblast is the precursor for basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes. To easily memorize this you can say that myeloid series gives rise to all blood cells except the lymphocytes which obviously arise from the lymphoid series. Now let's take a look at the lymphoid series. Here the common lymphoid progenitor gives rise to the natural killer cells or NK cells also called as the large granular lymphocytes and the small lymphocytes on the other hand are for the two types the B and the T lymphocytes. The B lymphocytes further mature into antibody secreting cells which are known obviously as the plasma cells and I hope you all know this already. Now with this overview in mind, we further need to look at what stages of the hematopoietic cell formation occurs in the bone marrow and what are the stages that you see in the peripheral blood and the tissues. Now let's begin again from the multipotential stem cell. We have the common myeloid and the lymphoid progenitors. Now if you look at the blood cell development, the immature stages develop in the bone marrow and finally the mature stages are seen in the peripheral blood and finally some cells like the macrophages they move to the tissues. Now let's take a look at the individual series and name the cells in each of these series. So first series that you see here under the myeloid side is the platelet series. Now this series starts from the megakaryoplast which gives rise to promegakaryocyte which further develops into a megakaryocyte. Now interesting thing is all these stages are present in the bone marrow and eventually each megakaryocyte will release 2000 to 4000 platelets into the peripheral blood. Now to the next series that is the RBC series. You here see that this begins in the bone marrow from the proerythroblast also known as the pronormoblast stage. This series progresses through the next stages in the bone marrow which are the basophilic erythroblast, next is polychromatic erythroblast, next is orthochromatic erythroblast, finally polychromatic erythrocyte and erythrocytes or RBCs are released into the blood. The basophilic polychromatic orthochromatic erythroblasts here are also known as early intermediate and late normoblasts respectively. The final nucleated form here in the series is the orthochromatic erythroblast or the late normoblast. Now after this stage the nucleus is extruded out of the cell and this would result obviously in an anucleate early red cell and we have another name for that cell which is the reticulocyte. In this series each proerythroblast will generally become around 16 RBCs in the blood over a period of 5 to 7 days. Okay, next is a mast cell which arises from this series. Now mast cell is a very similar cell both in appearance and function to the basophils which is another type of WBC. Mast cells were once thought to be tissue resident basophils but now it has been shown that the two cells develop from different hematopoietic lineages and, then, and thus cannot be the same cells. Now moving on to the granulocyte formation, we have three types of cells that you all know already which are basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils. Now each of these cells develops from the myeloplast stage which progresses through the promyelocyte 
myelocyte, metamyelocyte and band forms. These are the same stages for each of these three cells that is the basophils, neutrophils and eosinophils. These develop in the bone marrow. Finally, they give rise to basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils in the peripheral blood. Next is the monocyte series here. Uh, this progresses through the pro-monocyte stage in the bone marrow and eventually gives rise to monocytes in the blood. These monocytes from the blood can further develop into macrophages or myeloid dendritic cells in the tissues. The other series that arises from the hematopoietic cell is the lymphoid series. Now the lymphoid series here begins with the common lymphoid progenitor. Now this progenitor gives rise to lymphoblast and progresses through the pro-lymphocyte stage in the bone marrow and finally it forms small lymphocytes both B and D types as well as the NK cells. Now NK cell is also known as the large granular lymphocyte here. The lymphoid dendritic cells also arise from the same lymphoid series and these are mostly found in the tissues. So this is how all the cells are formed in the blood.